Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome budget laptop that I recently picked up on eBay. And when it comes down to it, this is definitely one of the best that I've picked up at this price point. We've got a 15.6 inch display, a 6 core, 12 thread CPU, backlit keyboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. This is known as the Lenovo 3. Now if you do some searching around, you'll find some powered by Ryzen, some by Intel. And this one happens to be powered by the Ryzen 5 5625U. This is an APU I haven't tested yet. We've got a little more of a base clock and a little more of a boost clock over the 5600U. But overall, this should offer a little better performance, and we have plenty of power here to use this as your everyday laptop. We can get some really nice PC gaming out of the way. And this APU handles emulation like a champ. Original Xbox, Switch, Wii U, and even PS3 emulation. Like I mentioned, this does have a backlit keyboard. It's a single zone with three points of adjustment, but it does look good, and it definitely lights those keys up so you can see them in the dark. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got our power in, one full-size USB 3.2 port, full-size HDMI, full-function USB Type-C, so we do get power delivery out. We can also charge the unit up over USB Type-C, and it supports video out. So all in all, this laptop supports three displays. We can go over HDMI, USB Type-C, and we also have that 15.6 inch IPS screen built in. Taking a look at the right hand side I.O., we've got a full size micro SD card reader and another full size USB 3.2 port. The first thing I wanted to do was just take a look at the upgradeability, and we can easily access that M.2 drive so we can upgrade that down the road. We can also access the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth card, and we can also upgrade the RAM. So this has 16 gigabytes of RAM right out of the box, eight gigabytes of solder to the board, and we have an eight gigabyte stick. Obviously this is gonna use SODIMM RAM because it's a laptop. So when it comes down to it, we could upgrade this RAM to 24 gigabytes by replacing the eight gigabyte stick here with a 16. Taking a look at the specs here, for the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 5625U. This is based on Zen 3. We've got six cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 2.3, and a boost up to 4.3. We've also got built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1800 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display, 45 watt hour battery, and they're claiming 10 and a half hours of video playback with the brightness set to 50%. So all in all, you can expect around six hours of battery life out of this unit, which really isn't that bad. And the operating system here is Windows 11, but you could always install Linux on this if you want to. So yeah, very snappy experience here. Six cores, 12 threads, and I expected it to be a nice little experience. Out of the box, this actually runs at 15 watts with a boost up to 20, which does give you plenty of power for everyday tasks. But we can go into the BIOS and turn it to extreme performance, and I'll show you exactly how to do that in a second. It will come at a cost of battery life, and the CPU will get a bit hotter, but I haven't had a thermal throttle while doing any kind of gaming or emulation when this is in extreme performance mode. But if you're not looking to game or anything like that, you could leave it stock and you're going to have plenty of power for web browsing, email checking, document editing. You could do some light video editing at 15 to 20 watts with this. Light indie gaming would work out really well. You could do something like Dead Cells at 60 FPS, 1080p at 15 watts, no problem. But for those of you who do want to get the max performance out of this and really don't want to mess with a third party app to up the performance on that CPU, we can head right into the BIOS. So while the unit's booting, we're just going to press F2 a few times. You'll hear a single beat. And that'll bring us right here into the BIOS. We're going to go to configuration. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. System performance mode. We've got battery saving, intelligent cooling, and extreme performance. Put this in extreme performance mode. And when you're plugged into wall power, this will boost up to 32 watts, giving you the most performance this laptop can put out without having to use any third-party apps. Now it's time to check out a little bit of PC gaming, and first up we've got God of War 720p Low with FSR set to balance. We get an average of around 34 FPS, and we can always take that FSR down to ultra performance and jack that average up to around 43. But in my opinion, since we're already at 720p, it degrades the picture a little too much and it's really not worth it. At 720p with FSR set to balance, we can go ahead and lock this at 30 and have a really good time with the game. Before we test a few more PC games and then move over to emulation, I did want to check out a couple benchmarks. 
And first we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a solid 1400 on the single core and 5969 on the multi. Not looking bad at all on that multi given that we only have 6 cores here. 3D Mark Night Raid came in with a 13,167, and the final one here is Fire Strike with a 3,012. And remember, we're working with those built-in Radeon 7 graphics, and we've got it paired up with 3200 MHz RAM. At 30 watts, it's not looking bad. We could get a little more out of this, especially on the CPU side of things, by upping that wattage. But we're kind of right there at the edge with this cooling system, given that we've already taken it up to around 32 to 33 watts. Next up, we've got the original Skyrim at 1080p high, and usually I leave this locked at 60, but I did unlock it just to see what would happen. Looks like it jumps up to around 120, but I do notice some of the characters and the physics is a little messed up with this unlock, but you can get well over 100 FPS with it, so locking this at 60, 1080p high is going to be no problem at all. Next on the list, we've got Elden Ring 720p low. We can get an average of around 48. So, you know, running this at 720p 30 FPS really isn't too bad. It still looks pretty decent. It's just a really fun game in the first place. And the final PC game I'm going to test before we move over to emulation is Cyberpunk 2077. 720p low with FSR set to performance, this averaged 54 FPS. This game's definitely come a long way, but uh, it's still not there with these little APUs yet. So yeah, there are a lot of PC games that are going to run just fine on this if you want to run some older stuff, or if you don't mind playing these games at 720p, you can definitely get by with this laptop. But where this chip really shines is emulation. And first up, we've got some PS2 emulation using PC SX2, 1080p, DirectX 11 back in, and with some of the easier to emulate stuff, you could go up to 1440p, and games like Crash Bandicoot, it will do 4K, but remember, the built-in display on this laptop is only 1080. Here's some original Xbox emulation using the CXBX Reloaded emulator. We're at 720p, and I will admit there might be a few games that will struggle on this system, even with a lower resolution, and it really comes down to that Radeon GPU, but there's a lot of stuff that's fully playable with this emulator on this laptop. When it comes to Wii U emulation, using SimU, this chip definitely handles it really well. We're only pulling around 25 watts here with Bayonetta 2 at 1080p, and I also tested Breath of the Wild. We can run that at 60fps, 720p, but I would rather run it at 1080 30 It still looks great and plays fine with this laptop. Moving up to something that's a little harder to emulate, we've got PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, and you might see a little bit of screen tearing, that's because I didn't turn VSync on with the application, I totally forgot about it, kind of just didn't want to go back to do it. But as you can see, even with this harder to emulate PS3 game, it's running it at full speed. We are basically maxing out the TDP here, up to 32 watts, but it works great. And finally, we've got some Switch using the Yuzu emulator. Vulcan back in, we are in dock mode right now, so it's set up for 720p, 1080, and it's running great. Unfortunately, it's just really hard for me to show this gameplay off for reasons, but Afterburner is fully visible. But overall, the Ryzen 5 5625U handles emulation very, very well. So battery life can be all over the place when it comes to a laptop, there's a lot of variables to factor in. But with it set up just the way it is right now, and the screen brightness set at 70%, I got 7 hours and 26 minutes of YouTube video playback out of this at 1080p. And when it comes to gaming, you're going to get 1 to 4 hours depending on what you're doing. We've got a 45 watt hour battery, this thing can pull up to around 32 to 33 watts from the CPU, but then you got to factor in what the screen's pulling and everything like that. So it's really going to depend on how hard the game is on the APU itself. So 1 to 4 hours when it comes to gaming. But in the end, I think this is a great performing laptop, and I'm really glad I was able to test that 5625U. I've tested the 5600U in the past, and I've been a big fan of it. This really doesn't offer much more performance over that, 
but the way it's packaged here does work out really well for a nice little portable setup. But at the time of making this video, these are on eBay for $469, configured exactly like this. We've got that 5625U, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It's definitely one of the best deals that I've found on these Ryzen based laptops in a very long time. So if you're interested in picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I was thinking about installing Linux on it and see what we could do with that. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.